dissections is a tear of the intimal lining in your arterial wall. The wall gets so weak that the intimal inner lining will tear and blood will pool into the medial intima or the tunica media of the arterial wall, which is between the tunica intima and the tunica adventitia. We went over the layers yeah. yesterday. Do you have any questions about the layers? No, I just know it's like the, uh, the tunica media is the middle layer. Yeah, good. Okay, yeah. So blood will pool into the tunica media and what happens is it creates a false lumen. You're going to have a true lumen and a false lumen in the presence of a dissection. And the true lumen is the area where blood is supposed to go. Any artery would be considered a true lumen. We get that false lumen when the tunica intima tears, creating two spaces. And that false lumen can cause problems because blood will be pooling in the false lumen when it should be going in the true lumen, which is the pathway, direct pathway to the rest of your body. Here's a little diagram of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Oh, okay. So if we looked at the uh, aorta in a cross section, you would see this flap here. Here's the tear. And this is the false lumen. What used to be a normal arterial vessel it's like divided into two areas. This was torn here, and the true lumen is, like I said, the direct pathway to the rest of the body, but you can see how uh, blood is being shared by, oops, by the true lumen and the false lumen. In this longitudinal view, you can see, as we're leaving the heart, this is the ascending aorta, you can see the tear here, and then what it does is it pulls in the tunica media, so this is this would be the tunica intima right here. Mm -hmm. Then it tore through that and pulled into the tunica media. This is the tunica adventitia, the most outer part of the vessel wall. And then you create this flap. These patients will have the most severe ripping chest pain they've ever experienced. I've been told that this type of chest pain is far worse than having a myocardial infarction. The way you tell the difference between uh, a true lumen and a false lumen is that a false lumen will typically be larger and during systole, this flap here will move towards the false lumen. If you think about it, since this is the true lumen and this is the direct pathway from the left ventricle, and obviously this is the false lumen, blood's going to come in through here during systole. Wouldn't it make sense that during systole, the blood is going to push this wall here this way or towards the false lumen. So it's going to push it away from the true and towards the false lumen. If you think about it, blood is going to naturally come through here, fill in here. You're going to have more volume here. That being said, if you have more volume on this side, it's going to push this wall up against the false lumen. Like I said, it's a tearing of the tunica intima and it spreads into the media layer of the aorta. The tunica adventitia is not affected. The most common cause of aortic dissections is chronic hypertension. You'll have uh, other etiologies like atherosclerosis, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. When you hear Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, you should always think of mitral valve prolapse, aortic aneurysm, and aortic dissections. And anytime you hear the word aneurysm, you should always think aortic dissections are linked or related. Because if the arterial wall dilates and becomes aneurysmal, the wall becomes weak. Now, not all people who get have aneurysms get a dissection. So what happens is, if you have an aneurysm and you start developing atherosclerosis, which is like plaque on the wall, and then you add hypertension, what is hypertension? So blood pressure is the pressure exerted up against an arterial wall. If you have a high blood pressure up against an arterial wall 
and you have atherosclerosis, and you have an aneurysm, you're just asking to have a dissection. Because blood is going to move across the plaque on the arterial wall, and what that does is cause friction. Over time, that plaque is going to pull on the arterial wall where it's located, and it can tear the tunica intima from there. Now, I'm sure you've heard the term Marfan syndrome. If you have options of which one is associated with aortic dissections, and you don't see these two, but you see this, then choose that one. With Marfan's, we know that it causes much of a prolapse, and it causes aortic aneurysms. Physical signs, loss of consciousness, and hypotension. Why didn't I write chest pain as a physical sign, do you think? A physical sign gets confused with symptoms quite a bit. Yeah. Because a physical sign is objective, meaning these are signs that anyone other than the patient can be observed. In other words, anyone other than the patient can observe mm -hmm. these signs. And chest pain would be more subjective because subjective means only the person or the patient can describe their, how they feel. Mm -hmm. And their first thought is a heart attack. And the majority of those patients are negative. They don't have anything wrong with them. Ripping chest pain is a symptom that's subjective to the patient. But hypotension and loss of consciousness are signs that anyone else can observe, not just the patient. So you can see in this image here, this is just like part of the wall that's torn. And it's hard to tell, if you're lo looking at just this view, it's hard to tell you know, which side the dissection's on, but this, you can definitely tell there's a dissection just by this. And there are artifacts that you have to know that can mimic a dissection. And the first one is called a side lobe. So side lobe artifacts are known to cause uh, suspicions of dissections and also reverberation. Mm -hmm. uh, a few different types of aortic dissections with two categories. This is kind of confusing. There's really only two types. You have a Stanford A dissection and you have a Stanford B. And then you have three different subtypes. Two types of dissections with three subtypes. Stanford A has two subtypes. The first one is called the DeBakey 1. The DeBakey 1 will dissect the entire aorta, ascending aorta, transverse, descending, and into the abdominal aorta, and then possibly beyond. <clears throat> So the three that it's traveling is the ascending, transverse, and the descending? Pretty much the entire aortic arch and the abdominal aorta. So everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. sorry. So that's the bakey one. So Stanford A, the bakey one. Then you have a debakey two where it only dissects the ascending aorta. A DeBakey 2 and a DeBakey 1 are the most dangerous. And the reason is if the ascending aorta dissects, this will affect blood flow going to the coronary arteries because coronary arteries branch here. And you can see here in this image where it's dissecting, it's dissecting the sinus valsalva and then beyond. And if the coronary arteries are here, that will inhibit blood from entering the coronary arteries to perfuse the myocardium. The Stanford A is the most dangerous period because you have the DeBakey 1 and the DeBakey 2 where it dissects in the ascending aorta. In this image here, you can see the arrow pointing to that echogenic structure. This is the intimal flap. But you got to be careful because this could be an artifact. And the best way to eliminate the, any artifacts that mimic a, a dissection 
is by just moving your transducer. Change your angle, go to a different view, and try to see if that structure will stay in view. So a lot of times with uh, these dissections, obviously you'll have an aneurysmal aorta. And if you put color Doppler on here, you're gonna have close to severe or significant aortic regurgitation. Because mm -hmm. if this dilates, if the sinus of valve seven dilates, that means your aortic valve annulus is gonna dilate. And then that means your leaflets won't co-opt or close sufficiently enough to keep blood from pooling into the left ventricle. You're gonna have blood pooling into the left ventricle during diastole as a result of this dilated annulus. So they usually have pretty significant AR. Then we have a Stanford B dissection, which has a subcategory of a DeBakey 3. And a DeBakey 3, or a Stanford B, dissects below the left subclavian artery down into the abdominal aorta. These are the least dangerous of the two categories. If you see one of these, not the most emergent of all the dissections. The gold standard for finding a dissection or evaluating is a CT. It's just the quickest way. You just mm -hmm. put them in that tube and then you'll be able to see right away. This is a coronal view of a patient who has a dissection. If you're scanning someone and you see this right here, mm -hmm. what artifacts could this be? <laughs> Reverberation, yeah, so good. Let's see if we can stop. Let's see. 